boaties and fishermen. Wally here from the boating scene once again. This week I thought I'd cover a topic that gets brought up in phone conversation more often than not, and that is when people are purchasing outboards, they do not know whether they have a short or a long shaft engine. So I thought today we'd show you the two different, different types that we sell the most of. This is our short shaft, as you can see by the cavitation plate height. And over here, dropping down, is our long shaft. And uh, when, we, when I speak to people over the phone, most of them are not aware. They will just they will just ring up and ask for an 18 horsepower, and sometimes they get caught buying the wrong engine. The difference being, when you purchase a boat, there are different transom heights. And that's that's what determines your shaft length, is the height of the transom. You will, when you're, purchasing an outboard, grab yourself a simple rule like this and uh, you measure the back of the boat from where it sits to the deepest point. This deepest point should be in line with the cavitation plate right there. So uh, your, your, your lengths for the short shaft and the, and the long shaft outboards are your short's 380 mils, your long shaft is 500 mils. We do often sell a, what we call an ultra long, which is usually on the bigger craft, normally around 110, 115 horsepower onwards, and they are at 635 mil. Keep in mind, there can be a variation of up to 50 millimeters, depending on the manufacturer of the outboard and also the builder of the boat. So, you know, within 50 mil specification is pretty good, unless of course you're a, you're a racer, well, then it comes into a different world. We can cover that some other time. But for the average fisherman, what we've just said is pretty much does it. Now I'd also like to uh, just make a quick comment on last week's video. We had a few people come back to us and uh, ask us about starting the outboard with a fuel injected engine. If you remember, I showed you how to raise the hand throttle on the, uh, on the control box. If you have a fuel injected engine, that must not be touched. That must always be left in the down position. And basically all you would do is prime the engine and turn the key. It's that simple with a fuel-injected engine. So Wally signing out. See you next week. Bye.